well, right? Yes, please. We are recording. Thank you so much, Sam. Hi, everybody. I'm Nisa. I am uh, in the West Kingdom. I'm the DEIB officer for the West Kingdom. And um, welcome to the Brave Spaces discussion. Um, it may be more like a round table with everybody here, uh, depending on if Oud uh, makes it. Um, and, but I'm gonna start by sharing the screen, the, the slideshow. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yes. Okay. So there are a lot of classes today. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of overlap with what we're talking about here today. But um, we started to talk about in the West about brave spaces a couple of years ago. And this came up specifically when um, there was a, an event that was going to be in a town where the the trans community told the people in our group that the trans people should not go to that event location because that area was not safe. And um, that brought up the idea of how to create safer spaces. And I'm gonna read the poem in a few minutes so you'll get to see why we don't actually say safe spaces. Um, we say brave spaces um, because we want to make we don't want to have events in locations where people are going to feel scared to go. And Oud can speak more, more to that um, because they're a trans person and this has affected them. Um, for other people, we just want to make sure that at events that everybody feels welcome. You know, I'm really, really glad that we changed the name of the DEI office to DEIB because I feel like belonging is a really big part. We want people to feel welcome and like they belong. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can, there we go. Let's, so yeah, there's me. <laughs> I'm the West Kingdom DEI B officer. There's B now. Um, and then we have Oud, who is the head muted emissary um, for the Kingdom of the West. And they also, founded the Accessibility and Inclusion Office for this Principality of Sanagua, um, which is a, it's basically our branch of the DEIB office that focuses on accessibility um, at events, live, um, in-person events, and online as well. Um, and I'll let Ud speak to that more. So what is a brave space? Um, we're talking about using a poem, a modern poem, uh, and I'll read that to you now. An invitation to a brave space. Together we will create a brave space because there is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and we have all caused wounds. In this space, we seek to turn down the volume of the outside world. Oops. Uh, we amplify voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and continue to grow. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it to be, but it will be our brave space together and we will work on it side by side. So this is the basis of why we don't call any space in, in the SCA or outside of the SCA a safe space. Um, it can be for whatever reason, somebody shows up to an event and they don't feel safe because they're queer, they're, um, neurodivergent, They're, they have accessibility issues that have not been addressed um, to make them 
to make it easy for them to get around the event or to get to an event at all. They may have um, economic challenges getting to an event by themselves. They might, it would be really great if people could carpool. Um, and we're trying to uh, make that happen in the West. We're trying to, especially, it especially happens in Awartha, which is Alaska. Uh, apparently because in Awartha, there are a lot of events. There, there is a small population of people in the Principality of Awartha, and the events are um, in locations that make it hard for some people to get to. Sometimes they actually rent buses or vans to get people to events together, um, and that is partially because of um, mobility um, issues, especially for people who are older and have mobility issues. And it can also help people with um, issues of economics, not being able to pay for gas uh, to get to events. So I'd like to open this up to everybody here. What place do each of these spaces have at events? And how do you see safe spaces versus brave spaces? Or how do you understand it? Um, in your in your kingdom, in your local area where you are. I'll open it up for discussion now. I don't know if moderators are allowed to contribute. Go ahead, please do, Sam. <laughs> because I do have an example that seems to suit this for me. So um, I had an issue with someone in my local area. And it was personal, uh, th th things that went on outside of the SEA, but we saw each other at SEA events. And my options were to just not go to the events or go and, and have a hard time possibly with being around them. Mm -hmm. And it and we were both officers. That's what, you know, it's, it's not like that we were on completely, totally different sides of things. And so for me, it was a matter of getting myself to a place where I was always personally safe, you know, with awareness of my space with, you know, in an area where I was with friends, people that I felt safe with. And then I could be at this place with this person and it not be triggering and traumatic just it just was there was an understanding I think on everyone obviously I mean people aren't dumb there's an understanding on everyone's part that these are what we're all choosing to do as a, a group to to deal with this but that for me the brave space was saying I would I really want to keep doing what I'm doing and helping and having fun and I don't want to let this one thing crush that and so um and, and the thing was, the only safe space really in that sense for me would be to stay home. And I wasn't prepared for that. So I think I chose the brave space in that case is, is how I see it. Got it. Yes, it does sound like that. And you asked your friends to be there for you, right? Your friends had your back to have a safe, to have a brave space for you to be at in that event. Is that right? Exactly. They There was awareness without any kind of chaos, you know, just... This is, I know this is how it is. I, I And I wasn't truly, well, there were times when I didn't always feel physically safe. But again, there was, if people saw me in an uncomfortable situation, they would know to come and socially bail me out. Um, and so, yes, exactly that. Right. Um, I wanted to, uh, your, your comment made me think of something I really want to recommend to people to do that um, somebody recommended to me and I made a version for the S my SCA life and a version for outside of the SCA, which is, um, it's, uh, I can't remember what it's called right now, but it will come to me. It's a list of things that make me feel safer and brave in no matter what situation I am in, if I if I have an anxiety attack or a panic attack at an event, uh, it lists these are the people who I'd ask you to to find for me 
or you know, take me to this camp. <laughs> um, and these these are the people who I consider to be safe people to me. Um, if I do have an anxiety attack, these are the things that help ground me and and make me feel stable. And um, you know, things from like going for a walk, smelling essential oils, uh, having a quiet a quiet space to retreat to, all of these things. And emergency phone numbers of people like my my psychotherapist, if I need that, or my partner, if if they're not at the event, um, and things like that. And I will remember what that's called, so y'all can uh, make them for yourselves. And I post it like I have it inside my tent usually, and I tell my campmates where it is. Uh, I am ultimately. I'm ultimately responsible for myself in an event, but it it helps me to be able to go to an event um, knowing that ahead of time that these are the people who have my back, like you were saying, Sam, and um, and these are the things that if a situation arises, how to help me get back to um, a more balanced place. Um, I see- uh, I think go even go Dan- to, I'm sorry, even down to someone knowing where your inhaler is, you know, that is, yes. uh, oh, sorry, you were going to say, I'll go ahead. No, 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 that's totally important too. Yeah. If it, not just uh, things for calming, but yes, where is your inhaler? Where is your, you know, do you carry your EpiPen on you if you have one or where, where can we find it? Right. Uh, these are important things for people to know to help create a brave space for them. Um, yeah. And I see Goran Duch has your hand raised. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, this happened to me in 2001. Um, this really uh, deals with brave space. 9-11 um, happened the same time that my barony had its Middle Eastern drumming workshop night. And we had decided to uh, go ahead and 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 hold it if if we weren't even if we weren't going to do any drumming it was at least we'll be there for each other and the minute i uh open they opened the door the there's on the big screen is the um, two planes going into the building i should say that in real life i am an armenian from the middle east also in the sca uh, i was born somewhere else <laughs> and so whenever america gets involved with a middle eastern type war i become the face of the enemy and so I went in already seeing that it was going to be a problem for me. And the atmosphere became even worse and worse until somebody finally said, leave her alone. And I don't know how I got out of there, but that is when I started to feel I am not safe in the SEA and I need to quit this place. And a handful of people, uh, I should say I'm from Ontario originally, SEA wise. Um, and now I'm in Kaid. Uh, a group of people, very good friends from Ontario uh reached out to me and you know how we've we've heard this statement already the the people that have your back uh they really did have my back it wasn't just lip service for me they convinced me that at least with them i will be safe and so um i was it sort of motivated me uh gave me courage, I don't know, for the next event to say, well, at least, you know, there is a group that has my back, that if things get worse, I have at least those guys that could be my harbor. Well, I'm glad you found people like that. And um, I'm sorry that your experience going into, like you said, for 9-11 was not great. Um, I hope you feel that you have people where you are in Kaid now that have your back. Um, yeah, there's all different ways that people need to be made to feel welcome and included and not, <laughs> gosh, the idea that you were made to feel like an enemy. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, we've taken the idea at, um, I'm going to just take a breath because that was very heavy information and I want to acknowledge that. And thank you very much for sharing.
Sorry. No, 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 no. I want it to be real. Well, it's, it's, be it's been on my mind because lately, because uh, the atmosphere has been feeling the same as it was then. And I was, I've been thinking about quitting. And again, I'm looking for those safe harbor people again. Yeah. And do you have any, aside from people to make you feel safe, what can we do as an organization to make you feel safe? I think the, the breath of fresh air for me is that finally the SCA decided not to be Eurocentric, first of all, because when I first joined back in the 80s, I had to justify how someone like me, I am, like I said, in, in real life and also in the SCA, I'm, I'm from the Middle East. And so I had to somehow justify how someone like me would be in medieval Europe, as we mm -hmm. were pretending all these kingdoms were. And um, and also I was uncomfortable when I looked around and I saw not too many people of color and stuff. So and so I look, I mean, it took a bit. Oh, I almost said a bad word. Uh, it took a long time to finally change that. But but what concerns me is that that the EIB is just like in Monday. Uh, the mundane world, whatever happens in the mundane world, it kind of bleeds itself into the SEA. And so the DIB quickly has become this, this bad word. And it sort of, it feels almost like, oh, here we go. They're not going to listen to us again. Every time we try to make any kind of progress and trying to meet each other uh, and, and kind of solve these issues, that already we're be again, we're being dismissed. Uh, and partly it feels like, yeah, your voice isn't welcome. Uh, and because you're kind of challenging our power, our dominant power or something within the SCA, as well as I'm speaking mundanely as well. And so it, it makes me kind of feel a little, um, oh, God, what's the word? Um, hesitant, maybe. Uh, even though I'm trying, as, instead of just talking, I'm actually trying to do things like here I, the, for my local barony within a few months, we're going to have an event and I want to have the space to have a dialogue i'm calling it diversity dialogue and donuts so that people somehow won't be so hooked up on the the bad connotations of the word diversity inclusion all that and then just try to understand that there's been too much online crap going back and forth and i and i need to create this sort of in-person dialogue where we can speak and listen and hear each other without trying to and then see that um, uh, that there's actually common things here and there are things that maybe people never um, realized uh, was actually going on it just you know they just took it for for granted or something and and also because uh, the the SEA is my school it's my Armenian school in Lebanon I didn't go to an Armenian school Hmm. And and so my incentive to stay, I mean, why the hell should I stay after all this time if it's so stressful like this? And, and it's because this is where I'm learning about my people. And so I'm trying to create ways to meet the SCA halfway and um, say, look, you're attracting diverse people, but you're not keeping us because we don't see ourselves represented. And or when we try to speak, you're not listening to our voices. So uh, what I hope is that we not, a, this is why I love this, what's going on today, but I, I hope that we have more and more of that sort of thing uh, being raised into the, be spotlighted more instead of be a side issue right. in the SCA, not just within kingdom, but all of the SCA. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for speaking up. Um, yeah, I think, one of the presenters this morning who I moderated for was talking about how, and somebody said, what can, you know, white cisgendered men do to help further the cause, the causes of accessibility, it was what she was focusing on. And one of her comments was about, you know, uh, to make sure that you, if you talk about this issue more, then more people will talk about it. And also, for people to realize our one of the biggest struggles for all of the 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 words in diversity equity inclusion and belonging is that people often think that we're trying to take something away from them like you said people in power right the people in power in any in any organization or in in the SCA or with outside of the SCA and 
we are trying to share to people that we're not trying to take anything away. We're trying to, you know, help our groups, help the SCA survive and thrive, right? By we're making- We're trying to include, that's the word. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to add. Exactly. And if the SCA is going to survive, I believe that DEIB issues have to be have to be actually put into, you know, importance to include people of color, include people um, who are queer, include people who are, um, who, you know, have any kind of issues getting to an event or actually participating in an event, um, you know, trying to make it accessible and inclusive um, for everybody. And I know that that's, it can sound like a, a dream, but we need to have a vision to work towards, right? And uh, so here are some things that we're doing in the West to create brave spaces. Um, at our events, especially at the bigger events, um, we're trying to have uh, a DEIB tent and a table so that we have visibility for our issues. We have had ice cream socials to get people to come over and find out what we're about. Uh, but also the tent, even if it's a, a small pop-up tent, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of a tent it is. It's just a place for people to go if they need some downtime, if they need a place for quiet, if they need a place to cry, if they just need a place to be less stimulated by what's going around on around them. So we're trying to have that have those spaces be available um, in a worth of they're calling it a sanctuary tent and they also have um, earplugs for people. So if the noise at events is affecting somebody that they can get some earplugs and find and have a quiet space for a little while. Um, I'm trying to have at least a pop-up tent for people to if we can't have a, a tent, an enclosed tent, to have a pop-up tent available for people to be able to have a space that they know is a brave space that they can go and have somebody there from our DEIB office who will be there to, you know, talk to them, um, give them some water, give them a, a place to just be away for a little while. And the reason why I um, am saying a pop-up tent versus uh, another tent is is an accessibility issue. One of our principality DEIB officers has mobility issues. And so we had to find something that that they could carry to events easily. And the first tent I got was over 50 pounds and we weren't expecting that. I guess I didn't read the fine print. So we did some more research and looked and found something that was, I think about 25 to 30 pounds that had a, you know, a rolling bag to make it easier for them to be able to take to events and set up and do their job as the, as the DEIB officer for our principality. So we have to think about things like that. We have to also consider, I know in the West we've started, not the DEIB office, but the Seneschal has started making sure that every event has um, it's clear before the events what the accessibility is like on site so that people know what they're go what, what they're getting into if they have mobility issues so they know what the terrain is like they know if they're gopher holes or potholes or grass or pebbles or whatever the terrain is so they know ahead of time um and as I said, and so our DEIB officers can't always be at every event. We're not always um, available for every event. Uh, but I also have tried to inst inst install the idea of having um, flags for people to have at their campsites for the most part, this this again happened after the um, the event where the trans community was worried about going to events and feeling safe. So I got some modern 
pride flags, progress pride flags, little hand flags uh, for people to, so I pass them out at events. So I, so people would know what camps they felt safe going into. Um, and to know that if for whatever reason, there was not a DEIB table and tent at the event that they could go somewhere else where they knew that they would be, that they ha would have a safer place to be. And that's also now that the, I think the Chatelaine uh, office is just newly under the DEIB umbrella. It's gonna be great to be able to work with the Chatelaines more closely to because their job is to make people feel welcome at events, right? That's their first, they're often the first point of contact for people at events, maybe even before events, if they're asked about gold key, for example, for uh, garb for new people. I don't know if it's called gold key everywhere. So those are some ideas. Also, Oud has um, gotten, it's really easy to get uh, blue clothespins and we, put them, we give them to people to put on chairs outside their camp uh, so that people know that this is an extra seat. If you need to take a break from walking around the event and you need a place to sit for a spell, that you have a place to sit, that this chair, if it has a blue clothespin on it or if it's a blue chair or blue somewhere, we know that that's a chair that's a welcoming space for somebody. Um, and it can be because you're tired, it's, uh, you know, you just need, you need a break. And all of these are little ways that can hopefully add up to bigger, um, bigger ways to help people feel that they're in a brave space. Now, I think, let's see. Yes, whoops, all these things I've started talking about already. Um, People had to ask me uh, about whether or not we would have pride flags or blue feather flags because blue feather is obviously the symbol of the queer group in the SCA. Um, I'm a member of blue feather. I'm happy to, to have a blue feather flag and also, or but and also, new, new people don't necessarily know what a blue feather stands for. So want to have both, have a progress pride flag and a blue feather flag at events so people know um, and introduce people who are new to events that about the blue feather group. So uh, Oud said, Let's talk about those parties. So this is a whole other part of the conversation is parties and uh, making people feel like they're safer, brave, in a brave space at a party. And I think that this probably is a little bit of a longer conversation than we can have here, but it's about but we can start having the conversation here. It's about making people feel like they're not necessarily, if you go to a party that you don't necessarily have to drink alcohol. And it's also about people respecting that no is a complete sentence. If somebody approaches you and is trying to hit on you that no <laughs> means no, and that they can feel like they can go to parties and have that respected. Um, I say it's a bigger issue because somebody has recently come to me and asked if we can do a training about that, about uh, consent education. And so we're working on figuring out if there is already a class on that. If not, we're going to definitely put one together. Um, I see somebody has something in the chat, but I can't read it. Sam, can you see what that is? I'm, I'm checking. It says both is good. If that's what, uh, that's the last message I see. You uh, posted the link to the your address, and then the next message says both is good. Okay. Okay. Great. So, does anybody have anything that they want to add about SCA parties? 
I'll say that from my camp um, at Penzik, uh, we have a party once a year and we do not, we have a very big party uh, without alcohol. I don't, and the reason why is number one, um, my persona wouldn't drink alcohol. Number two, the uh, the person, um, my partner who is the, who founded our household is a recovering alcoholic. And so we have just made that, may it be so this is a, you know, this is a space that is alcohol free. If people want to bring their, uh, their cordials and stuff that they've made, that's fine. <laughs> But the only drinks you're going to get at our camp are going to be um, Middle Eastern uh, drinks, including uh, sherbats and also Turkish coffee. Um, and we also have a lot of people in our camp who are gluten free. So all of the desserts we make, which are mostly Middle Eastern desserts, are all gluten free. So we have that as another way of being inclusive for people. Um, Kat, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I just, I kind of have to chuckle because parties are a thing at all large events, especially at wars. But I kind of, I'm chuckling because we're talking about consent. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing that happened to me, one of the very first things that happened to me at my first event, you know, the parties happening after court, blah, blah, blah. We're all, everybody's milling about. And the first thing some idiot handed me was a cloven orange. Oh my gosh. Back in the day, right? And I was very new. And the folks in my household had just kind of forgotten to tell me about the whole cloven orange thing. And there was a lot of sniggering. And I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, so I'm chewing on the clove and they're looking at me expectantly. And I'm just like, hand it off. I was like, am I supposed to pass this on? I don't know. And I'm like, why is everybody laughing at me? I have, you know, mm -hmm. do I have something on my nose? What's going on? And then somebody leaned over and explained to me and I was just horrified. <laughs> now, mind you, I was not, you know, a social wallflower by any means, but I was just like, could somebody not have told me this before? You know, instead of everybody thinking it was funny. And I was just like, no, no. That's consent's a thing because I and I don't care who you are. It's it's rude to expect that of someone, and especially someone who is new. That's uh, that's trying to take advantage of people. And I was just I actually got quite mad about it <laughs> at the time. But you know that was thirty five years ago almost. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm glad to hear. I'm I'm glad to hear someone else picking up about that kind of casual joking accepted my brother yeah. it, my brother calls it grab ass um mm -hmm. yes <laughs> that to same kind of thing and and I'm grateful to see that the younger generation are definitely you know and in in conjunction with some of the older generation are definitely trying hard to change that but unfortunately a lot of the us older folks I mean I like I said I got into the SCA in the uh, mid eighties probably, but to see that, that it's still totally socially acceptable. And it's one of the reasons I don't play anymore. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I literally have, have told people, I saw somebody walking into our camp a couple of years ago at Gulf Wars with one of those damn things. And I said, where are you going with that? And they were like, well, I'm just going to go hang around the fire pit. Blah, blah. I was like, no, you can hang out with us, but you better put that fucking thing away. Excuse my French. <laughs> But they were like, well, why? And I'm like, because it's not done. If you are interested in somebody, then you express an interest in them. That's one thing. But trying to play that silly game is 40 years old and needs to go away. Do not bring that shit in here. And they looked at me and they were like, you're serious. I'm like, I actually went to my tent, and put my hat, my coronet on and walked back out and went, I'm effing serious. And they were like, oh, okay. And it's <laughs> it's a shame that you have to, that the only reason that I had to pull rank you was to pull rank, right? I um, hate doing that too. Yeah. Hate it. Um, but yeah. but that is indeed the time to do it. If you're going to do yes, it, that's yes. the time. And so and I do. Anybody I wish who knows me and Meridia's knows, Kat don't pull rank unless you make her. 
I truly wish more, <laughs> like maybe you should teach a class because I really wish more peers would understand that. I know they want to keep people happy and they want to not, you know, offend the old timers because of course that's what the, the foundation, the SCA is built on. But I think what you said about it's 40 years old and it needs to go away is a great way to put it. And nobody's getting hurt by that, you know. Rachel, I see you have your hand raised. Um, as the probably newest one here, what is the deal with the cloven orange on the off chance <laughs> that, you know, I show up and get handed one? <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn my, my mic back off. Okay. Uh, well, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, anybody here, what I believe is happening with the clove and orange is that you're supposed to take a clove and then pass the orange to somebody else, like with, so it's like you're both your mouths are on the orange at the same time, trying to get a clove out. So it's like, it's a really intimate act because you're both there. And it's supposed to be a party thing, you know, to be able to, if people are, I guess it's a one way of people flirting with each other. Oh, jeez. Did I explain that right, Kat and Sam, since it seems like we're about the same age? Yes, I think so. I think it was a a, a sort of a kissing type gesture, but yes. only the fruit. Yes, and, you are and, correct. And it's also it's not even the physical fruit. Sometimes the, just the suggestion of it is used as a way to kind of bring up a subject, you know, like it is, it, it's legendary for that, for, for breaking the ice. But again, it's done when it's done with newcomers, they don't know that they're fixing to be put in this proximity and seen in this way. And yes, all of the above. I also know of another, another thing, uh, this, sort of ties into parties, but not necessarily just at parties, is um, uh, I had at the first uh, Penzik I went back to, uh, you know, two years ago um, after the pandemic uh, had started, I didn't want people to assume that I was open for hugs. So I had some pins made up, no hugs, please. And friends of mine said, can I have one of those? And I said, absolutely. I never had to, I never had to actually use it because my friends used their words and they were like, are you open to hugs? Because they knew that I was very COVID conscious, COVID safety conscious. Uh, so it might not work at parties so much if they're, if they're in the dark, cause not everybody's going to be able to see that. But I think it's a really good idea to have in case you think you might need it for situations like I described. Um, you know, no physical contact is it's totally okay to tell people that that's that that's your boundary. Um, whether you say it with words or and if you have a pin available. Um, anything else in the chat relevant to this subject about the parties? I feel like I want to like write uh, write a bunch of stuff down after this to be able to have like a handout for people going to parties. I think this is really a very, this is a very stimulating conversation. I can me. definitely, I'll, I'll relay to you. Uh, Kehande said, I hate attending an event or party and someone offers a drink. And when I ask what it is, they say two shots for asking. Cool. I'm sober, homie. <laughs> like very much so on that one. I agree. Um, Another person, this one got up my nose in a big way. I, I felt this deeply. It said, my first event, I was borrowing a tent and they set it up behind a huge party. I had to pay a toll to get my tent, uh, get to my tent. And the toll was the cloven fruit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, you know. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, Kehinde also says enforcing boundaries is not a form of violence. For some places you trade between mouths. Oh, this is a, a note on the how the fruit works. For some places you trade between mouths. For other places, a person hides the clove and you are meant to retrieve it. Oh, my goodness. I haven't mm -hmm. heard that version. And Kehinde said their experience was the latter. So, yeah, no, that's wow. Not okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I think if more people are aware, like in writing or in if people see that this stuff is a possibility that they'll know to and I'm glad Rachel that you brought up that you're 
really new and I hope we can help you avoid some of these issues at your at the next party you go to I yeah literally I joined right be like I went to Penzik and then COVID hit and Mm -hmm. I'm over in the east so I haven't really been able to get to a lot of stores and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah and Penzik is a is also a sort of a completely different event uh, mm-hmm. in, in some ways, you know, pe- some people don't do anything else related to the SCA all year and they just go to Penzik and yeah. a lot of times they go for the parties. But... It is a party vibe for sure. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think I'm not going to lie. That was part of the reason I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Gulf Wars has had that reputation too, but not it's it it comes and goes, you know, Gulf Wars, I think, is is not quite this party centric though they do have some famous parties there oh yes Um, we we do have some pretty awesome parties but it's definitely not as of course it's a much smaller war too yes i experienced shadow legion in all its oh yeah shadow legion is pretty much legendary with their stuff but yeah yeah. and but again you know what to expect yes and, and you right you know before you even enter the gate you know what to expect and that makes all the difference Right, exactly. So, but and, here, I'm oh, sorry. There's a message here that says "boat day, boat day." <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm curious. That's Kehinde <laughs> boat day, boat day. Can you please explain that? Oh, Candy, I think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Kehinde, are you there? Can you explain? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, apologies. My mic isn't hooked into the stream, Kehinde says. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. Who, does anyone else so, know what boat day is? So sorry, stream. Uh, you can only read this through the transcript. Uh, the stream will not be able to hear me saying this, but it is. It, that's Trimeris's like big thing. Is they all they parade through the the marketplace wearing the boats on their heads, and that's like their whole thing. Did you guys get that? Trimeris does a thing where they parade with the boats on their heads. <laughs> and that's boat day. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, at uh at Penzik, um, there is the the Lake Pride parade that goes around uh for people who live on the lake as as I do. And uh for, for a while it was a fun thing and they would come in they would end the parade at our camp but it, it got to be i'll just say really drunk out <laughs> at that parade and we have um since not in the past couple of years since we came back after uh the covid pandemic started that um we have not let that end in our camp um I, I will extend the invitation to everybody here uh, that if you would like to come to a party at Penzik that is sober and everything's gluten-free, you are welcome to La Familia Gladiatoria's party on Monday night um, of War Week. It's usually Monday night of War Week and um, it's where the temple on the lake. Um, and if oh, accessibility a is an issue because the buses don't run at night, um, if you are not able to get a ride down from uh, security in a golf cart, um, if you let me know, I will set aside some desserts and bring them to you the next day. I know that a lot of it is about being social and being at the party, but if you know one of my friends stepped in a hole at Penzik right the, the day or two before the party and broke her leg, oh, so I said, no. okay. I'm going to set aside some desserts and we'll, we'll have tea tomorrow. You know, so I went up to her camp and uh, I gave her a tour of all the desserts and we had tea and it was lovely. That was so, very nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, that was a lot about parties. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What are the questions you have about making braver, safer spaces in our society? Will you take this idea about brave space and go forward and keep it in the area you live in? It it really stands out to me. Great, I'm glad, Sam. Thank you. And 
Kat, I'm you're... enjoying learning how I can do more. Mm -hmm. um, I've always told people in our camp, um, the you're fading, Kat. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my headphones might be starting to die. Um, <laughs> our camp has always been very welcoming and diverse. Um, and I hope that we can, and I know we're going to continue to do that. Um, but this has been really nice to help kind of reinforce in my mind things that we are doing right and things that we could do better. So... This is this has been very good. Thank you so much. Um, I forgot to remind you. I, I was supposed to give you a five minute warning. Uh, it is actually three minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, well, good good time to end then, and just to say that uh, or wrap it up anyway. Um, again, I put this in the I put this link the longer link in the chat. But tinyurl.com WKDEIB2024 is the uh, shorter URL if you'd like to find out more about the event that we're doing in April. Say that one more time. Tinyurl.com slash WK West Kingdom WKDEIB2024. Okay. Thank you. And Thanks for coming. Thank you all. And do I need to do anything else before I stop recording? Um, I guess that's it. We'll, uh, I, I'll go over to the um, salon, which is, I guess, the social room, if anybody yes. has any more questions to, so we can let the next uh, discussion come in here. But I'm not sure if there is somebody right after us or not. Do you know, Sam? I don't think so. And that's, not, and that's why I wasn't too scared when I realized that I had let the time. This was such a, a good discussion. I totally just felt like it was could keep going. Um, but yes, I, we, I will also come over to the salon just in case that way, if you have any questions and I have the role and everything, if you, you know, whatever we need to, I need to make sure you have. So I'll see you there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much.